This video is going to show you how to transform that old fiberglass shower into a custom tiled shower. So we're going to dive into all the steps. The first thing we did was remove the glass door so it wouldn't shatter and go all, all over the place. Then this fiberglass shower surround was cut into four distinct pieces, the main wall, the plumbing wall, and the back wall. And then we removed the shower pan and checked the studs and make sure they were even, plumb, and 16 inches on center. That's important. Then we added blocking for our roughing valve. For this project, we ended up using the Hansgrohe eye box. And there's a a white sticker on the front that indicates the depth of the wall, the finished wall with the tile and the backer board. So you got to set it to the right depth and then we used PEX plumbing per our local plumbing code to install this and connect it to the existing lines. Now we centered it on the drain, made sure it was level and secured it to the wood blocking in the wall using galvanized screws. The same thing was done with our shower drop ear elbow for the shower arm. We centered that on the drain, connected it to the eye box and then we moved on by making sure that it was secure to that wood blocking using galvanized screws. The eye box is easy to install. Purple board was added to the studs using coarse threaded screws because we have wood studs. And the reason we're using drywalls, we're going to put curdy membrane over it. Now, in this case, we used the rotor zip to cut out a perfect circle for our eye box. And then we finished off the drywall. A damp sponge was used to clean the surface of the drywall and also prevent it from absorbing the moisture from the thin set. In this case, we used Schluter's All Set, mixed it to a thinner consistency and burned it into the surface of the drywall with the flat side of the trowel. Then directional troweling was used such that all the trowel notches face the same direction and the curdy membrane, in this case the curdy wide roll, was embedded into the drywall and we made sure to smooth it out and not have any air gaps or any kind of excess thin set between the curdy membrane and the drywall. Also we used a laser level to make sure this was level and peeled back the curdy membrane to make sure that we had good coverage. That's always recommended. The same steps were done for the main wall, so dampening the surface, adding the thin set, tucking the curdy membrane into the corner that's also very important and then rolling the wide roll to the next wall having the wide roll is great because there aren't going to be any seams in this shower it's just one big monolithic surface we did the same thing for the plumbing wall and in this case we had to cut out a little area for our Hans Grohe eye box so as you'll see here we just cut that out using a utility knife and then we continued to compress the curdy membrane into the thin set and up against the drywall by the way this is an approved Schluter method. And then we applied thin set between the curdy membrane and the top portion of the wall because this seam is going to be sealed using curdy band. We just use curdy band to seal that. And you don't really need any waterproofing above the shower arm. If you want, you can do that. But in this particular case, we did not. So we just smoothed everything out and also used a sponge to make sure that none of the thin set was on the wall. And then we added a valve seal around the shower arm arm area. You can do that. You can also add a mixing valve seal, but we used Curdy Fix instead and smoothed it out using just our finger. It's important to smooth that out for the tile. One thing we did do before adding the waterproofing was cut out a section of the subfloor to reveal the drain because this drain was offset and we needed to relocate it. So we cut the drain using a sawzall and this is the Schluter ABS drain that we're going to be using. They come with these spacers that you can put in the drain and set it before the pan, but don't throw those away. In this case, we're adding wood blocking using three inch deck screws. We're marking the center location for the drain and cutting a five inch hole, which is the max hole for a Schluter drain. We applied more liquid nails over top of those wood blocks and then screwed our OSB in place. Now we have an ABS connection we need to make. So we added the cement to the hub and the drain and made sure those were welded together and set the drain to make sure it fit. We mixed up more Schluter all set using this DeWalt mixer. It's a really good mixer. And then we cleaned the surface of the shower pan area. We cut our shower pan the size and one of the questions that we get is how much can you cut off a Schluter shower pan well it's really up to you you can cut it as much off as you need but we cut this shower pan the size dry fitted and then what we did is put our little uh, spacer in place to make sure the drain would fit and also the fact that we wanted to check and make sure that the drain was nice and level you have a lot of flexibility with the position of the drain then we used a one quarter inch by three eighths inch square notch trowel to apply thin set again it's all set by Schluter we set the pan in place over top of that thin set and then walked on it to compress it. We added our spacer to the thin setted area where the drain will go. Then we applied more thin set over top of that spacer using a six inch joint compound knife. It's really, really important to put a lot of thin set there and have it ooze out in between the drain and the pan. And just make sure that the drain again is nice and level. And then we centered the drain. We added more thin set over top of that because you're gonna have to add a fleece to bond the Schluter shower drain to the Schluter shower pan. You want 
make sure that none of the thin set remains that oozes out and smooth it out. Also, you don't want any thin set oozing out in between that fleece and the portion of the drain that we're pointing to. We also cut this Schluter curb to size using a utility knife. You can do that. The fleece is on top. It's completely waterproofed. And this is a really great option for any type of shower using a Schluter shower tray. We also cut the back of this off because we did not replace the, sh the floor in this bathroom. And we used an oscillating multi-tool to cut this down because we needed to make sure that it was to the height that we wanted for the shower. We also pre-cut it so that it would slope ever so slightly into the shower pan area because Schluter, Schluter shower curbs are not sloped, so we wanted to slope it in ourselves. Then we applied more thin set to the face of the shower tray and also the side walls that were waterproofed with the curdy membrane. We applied curdy fix to the bottom of the curb as you saw there and then we set the curb in place to make sure that it was still pitched toward the shower pan. Then we added more thin set to all four corners of the Schluter shower tray where it met up with the walls and the curb and we added these inside corners and outside corners and smoothed them down. One of the things that kind of frustrates us a little bit with Schluter showers is the thin set buildup but it's a great system as long as you minimize that buildup whenever you're applying the thin set mortar. So you got to mix the thin set mortar to the right consistency and also make sure that when you bond the inside and outside corners and the curdy membrane, the curdy band membrane, that you smooth those out as much as possible. So here we're applying our curdy band to the main wall and to the shower curb in between the curb and the pan and then we're smoothing everything out with that six inch joint compound knife. We're going to do the exact same thing for the plumbing wall and the wall opposite that. But again, it's really, really important to smooth out all these sections that you're going to be applying the curdy band to. Once the curdy band is in place, we added the outside corners between the curb and the curdy membrane. Again, smooth these out so that you don't have a buildup of thin set between the curb and the wall or the shower pan. So again, just use that six inch knife and a sponge. Now this is the drain setup. There's a little metal portion that goes down into that flange, that black flange. Remove the strainer because you don't want thin set getting into the screw holes and then align that such that it meets up with the height of your tile or roughly even with the tile because what we're going to be doing is hoping that that tile sits a little bit above the drain and then what we did is we back buttered the four corners of the metal plate here so that it has proper support such that if somebody steps on it it won't crack the the tile around it so we just smoothed out the thin set made sure it was square and once the thin set cures you should do a 24-hour flood test after the flood test we dry fit all of our black penny tile to make sure the layout was good and we left an expansion and contraction joint along the perimeter so that our main wall tile could actually hide that we also checked the back of the penny tile to make sure that none of the glue was on top of the tiles themselves so we used directional troweling here and then we set the penny tiles ever so slightly in the thin set mortar again we used schluter all set for this and we tamped all the tiles down using a grout float now the main thing here is you want to make sure that the top of that metal flange for the drain is just ever so slightly below the top of the tile like a six 16th, 32nd of an inch. Then we used tile nippers to cut the tiles individually around the drain. And we also held a, some of the penny tile with linesman's pliers and cut those with an angle grinder. But we cut these tiles one by one. And then we cleaned the tiles using a paintbrush and sponge. For the first set of wall tiles, we actually centered our laser level on the wall. And then we did a dry layout to see what the tile layout would look like from left to right and also from top to bottom. Because you don't want to be left with a sliver of tile at the ceiling or on the left or right side of the shower wall. We used Schluter's all set. We used directional troweling along with a Euro trowel to set this first course of tile. Double check that the laser level was still centered and set the first tile at the vertical and horizontal intersection. A 1 16th inch horseshoe shim was used between the bottom of this tile and the shower pan tile for an expansion and contraction joint. That's also very important obviously because of the TCNA handbook but also you don't want your tiles to crack and neither do you want the grout to crack. Now we also had to cut these tiles Tiles, the bottom of the tiles to fit the concavity of the shower pan. Remember the shower pan will slope upward on the along the perimeter for the proper slope. And one of the best tools for this is an angle grinder with a diamond blade attached to a HEPA vac and the dust shroud. In this case we're using the shop vac from Fine as well as the Fine 
WSG7 angle grinder with the dust shroud. But this first course of tile, we back buttered all those, we pounded them in place, and we make sure that all the thin set was compressed between the tiles and the curdy membrane. Working the way up the wall, we continue to use our Tuscan seam clips as a leveling system. We had a little one and a half inch piece at the ceiling. We used the Master Puma to make those cuts. You could also use an angle grinder or a wet saw. And an expansion and contraction joint was left between the top of this tile and the ceiling. We're going to fill that in with a siliconized acrylic. The next day, we removed all the Tuscan seam clips as well as the horseshoe shims and we cleaned the surface of the tile with a white scrubby pad and we also cleaned the individual grout joints to prep the tile for the grout. The next wall that we tiled was going to be a herringbone pattern tile wall. Again, we used directional triling with our Euro trout and we set the laser level in the center of the wall and used these 1 16th inch horseshoe shims between the first course of tile and the main shower pan tile for that expansion and contraction joint. The main thing here is we're trying to line up all the tips of the first row with a horizontal laser level. That's going to be important because as you can tell with a herringbone tile wall, everything needs to be precise. This tile actually was up off of the shower curb. You'll see our horse two shims are between the first tile and the curb. You also want an expansion and contraction joint there. But this main wall here, this first several tiles that we set on the wall, all were back buttered for improved bond strength. Now we lucked out and the last several tiles here, the tips of them were right flush with the ceiling and that was awesome. But the next day we pulled all of our horseshoe shims, cleaned the wall, and cleaned the grout joints. For the next wall we aligned the laser level with the tips of the previous wall. That way we could start with our 45 in the corner and make sure that the symmetry was there for the plumbing wall and match the previous wall that we tiled. Again we used these <laughs> horseshoe shims and we added them between the first bull nose and the tile that were up against the shower curb. Then we made a cut in this tile around our eye box using our angle grinder diamond blade, HEPA vac, and dust shroud. We back buttered that and put it in place. It's always good practice though to go ahead and test fit the escutcheon and make sure the escutcheon covers those cuts around your roughen valve. So we just continued upward here and made our way up to the shower arm. Again, what we did is use directional troweling and we cut a hole in this 3x6 using a carbide hole saw from Milwaukee. Very easy cut, nothing to it. Then we ended at the top of the ceiling again leaving an expansion and contraction joint between the last row of tile and the ceiling. Here's what the wall looked like in the end and we cleaned it with our white scrubby pad and knife. Thin set was applied to the top of the shower curb and we cut down six by six tiles into a four and a half inch tile and basically used our Tuscan seam clips to keep all these tiles in line with each other and to minimize the lippage with them. But once all the tiles were set on top and were evenly spaced, we checked that they were level and pitched toward the shower pan. That's also very, very important. Now what we did here is we cut down our three by sixes by about one inch and then we set those vertically and we removed any of the thin set that got on our floor and then we added our chair rail on top of those cut down three by sixes. This added additional flare. We also added our 1 16th inch horseshoe shims between the tiles in the floor. Again, you want that expansion and contraction joint. Same thing between the subway tiles and the chair rail. We really like how this looked because it's a traditional looking shower curb. We did the exact same pattern on the inside and again the next day we removed the seam clips and horseshoe shims and cleaned the tiles. We added cardboard to the shower pan and we started the grouting with Ultra Color Plus FA from Mape. This is a great grout. Just mix it per the directions. Wipe down the walls with a damp sponge, not a totally wet one, but the damp sponge allows the grout to float over the tile and into the joints and remove any of the grout that gets on the ceiling. We taped over our metal shelves here and we grouted the other wall. In this particular shower, we grouted both the plumbing wall and the wall opposite with the white grout and also the curb. Now we pressed or tried to indent the grout. When it doesn't indent, you know it's ready to be tooled with a damp sponge. That's what makes Mape FA so great. It starts to set up in about 20 to 30 minutes, which allowed us to start grouting the accent wall with a black color. And that same black color was used over the penny tiles. That hogged up a lot of grout. So just so you, so you know, this black grout takes a lot of time to wipe clean as well. But be patient because it's definitely worth it. The last step in this shower was to apply Mapacil T. It's a 100% silicone sealant in the corners between the tiles. And then we spritzed it with Windex to help us tool that joint and get a nice smooth look. So we applied the Mapacil T in both corners where two changes of plane occur between the tile. Then we used 1050 QD. This is a siliconized acrylic latex sealant between the tile and 
and the ceiling. And the reason why we like that is you can paint it. But we're very happy with how this shower turned out. Hopefully the tips help you. And if you want the more detailed tutorials on how to build this shower, they're all now available inside the Bathroom Repair Tutor video library. So make sure you check out Bathroom Repair Tutor. Thank you.